Robert. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? I'm good. Uh, we're with uh, Robert Chester with Inspections for You, and uh, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to uh, talk about what our clients go through on inspections and uh, what uh, what um, what to, what we should look for. Um, during our inspection, uh, what Robert and uh, Josh, uh, his partner, and, and also his uh, son, I believe, right? Yes, that's true. And uh, Josh does most of the work, I guess? No, or does Robert Josh, do most of the work? Josh does I don't know. the uh, <laughs> inspections themselves. I take care of the paperwork. You take care of the paperwork. Yeah. Now, Josh uh, is here in the background, and uh, maybe we'll get him to come on camera if we're lucky enough. But, Robert, um, we've been very pleased with... Um, the work that you've been doing. I think you've been well, doing, thank the, you. uh, been thank doing you. some work for us for about six to nine months now? About nine months. Um, came down here about uh, 11 months ago, took a couple months to get started. Um, came down here mainly because I had a friend of mine that bought a house down here and he wished he had had an inspection done um, because uh, about a month after he moved in, the air conditioning went out, the plumbing went out. Oh, right? um, when he was plugging electrical cords in, they were short and out. And I'd been doing inspections for clients of mine in the States uh, on apartment complexes um, for about 35 years. And so I thought it might be a good thing to, to get going down here in, this, you know, in Mexico. Because it's, uh, it, not only is it a um, uh, growing market, a, a growing market, but it's it's we're finding a lot of safety issues that people are overlooking. Like uh, ninety percent of the homes and condos here don't have smoke detectors, yeah. don't have carbon monoxide testers, don't have GFCIs um, in the kitchen and bathrooms. That's one thing that always pops up in the inspections that we have is the GF, uh, GFCIs, CIs. Yep. yeah. Well, the reason for that is because let's say a woman's drying her hair and she's in the bathroom and, and she reaches over to do something and, and she's got a, a handful of wet hair, touches the electrical, she can get electrocuted. Yeah. Okay, where if there's a GFCI, it'll pop and nothing will happen. All she does is reset the, the GFCI. Same as in the kitchen. And those are, those are relatively... Inexpensive. inexpensive and easy yeah, to put you, in you, you can it's very easy to put in yeah. you just take the wall plate off pull the the uh, old outlet out um, put the new out, hook it in it tells you in, in the instructions anybody can do it it's very simple and it can save somebody's life um, the, the uh, smoke detectors we push really heavy and and by the way smoke detectors GFCIs carbon monoxide testers are not by law down here in Mexico it's our, merely our suggestion because it'll help save lives. Well, that's one thing that I think our, our, our clients need to know about is that we, it, most of the inspectors that we work with, particularly you, in, inspect to Arizona standards. Right. Um, and what you would find in Arizona doesn't necessarily apply to Mexican, Mexican. building code. Correct. Correct. And that's where the issues really come in. I, there's one other issue too that I think comes in is that the uh, pressure relief uh, valve on the on uh, the water on heaters. The water heaters. There's yes. no no hose. There's from. there's no line running from them. And in most cases, you can take the line and run it off of the pop off valve, and run it to the um, uh, wash machine drain. But then you don't have to drill it and go out and you know take it outside. Right. Now, if you have a wall that you can drill through and, and drain it onto the ground, you want to put it no more than six inches off the ground. Because if it just drains out and goes through the wall, somebody walking by can get scalded. Yeah. Where if it's just six inches off the ground, typically it's going to hit the ground. And We've also, at some of the condos, they have washout sinks. And yes. I've seen some of them drain into the washout exactly. sinks. Exactly. You can well. do that too. Yeah. You can do that too. Just somewhere to drain the water so that if that should go off, and do they go off very often? No. Uh, right. But they have gone off, and, and when they do, people get hurt. Yeah. You know? And especially if you're going to buy a condo or a house and rent it out to, to uh, you know, as an investment, you don't want your tenants to get, get, right. get hurt. There's also liability then, Exactly. Then you have a lawsuit. Yeah. And... Um, 
Now, now, besides the uh, the safety issues, which obviously is the most important, okay, um, we we uh, we recently had an inspection here where we came up with dry wood termites, I believe. Exactly. Is that a big problem here in Mexico? Well, Mexico, you're going to have termites. Uh, we just located some termites at our house. We're taking care of that issue as we speak. Now you have a house down here. Have a house in Choya. In Choya. Yes. Okay. And I have had since. 85. So you've been a lifelong owner down here. I have been coming down here since 76, Brought 75. the kids down when they were kids. When He's, Josh when, isn't a kid anymore. When Josh was about, <laughs> I don't know, you know, maybe 18 months old. He Is was that first right? Time, yeah, he was first time down here. Mm -hmm. And he's, been and he's still down coming down too. Yeah, right? matter of fact, he lives here. <laughs> matter of fact, he lives here. He, you know, Without him, we couldn't run this company. Sure, yeah, so. he, does, he does a bang out. Josh is behind the camera here, does a bang out job. Maybe he wants to do a paparazzi right now, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, so, so since 85? Yes. Oh, wow. Yep. You've seen a lot of changes, haven't yep. you? Yeah, so. Have you owned the same place in Choice? Well, no, I, I bought this place in 05, okay. uh, in 2005. But we've been steadily coming down here and, and owning different things since oh, 85. Oh, I, I gotcha. But um, uh, another thing to look for in, in, um, when you're purchasing a house, and we find that a lot of, is uh, reverse polarities, where they hook the hot wire into the ground and the ground in, into the, the hot. We've actually even seen where the ground wire is hooked into the, the ground on the, the oh, outlet right? instead of being grounded to the, the grounding yeah. screw. Uh, it, and then the next one is grounded right or you know hooked up right the next one's wrong so you want to make sure that they're all in success reminds me of living in Philadelphia yeah you know, and working in uh, um, what was it the uh, uh, north part of Philly okay no ground and so you can run your screwdriver along I, I don't know if it was it wasn't grounded properly you run your screwdriver around a, uh, a water pipe and sparks and spark would be, it yes yeah, spark yes, it exactly Yep. First time I ever encountered that. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well, the good thing is most plumbing out here is done with PVC. Okay. So you don't have that issue. Yeah, yet. yeah, right. But it's still, you know. Yeah, it's still something you have to look um, at. Yeah. Another thing I'd like to see in the new buildings is if they would put a um, main breaker switch mm -hmm. in the electrical box so that should something happen, you can go out and kill the kill all the power in the house at one time instead of going, well, is, is this the correct break or is this one? Then you just got to shut them all off. Well, how, how does that work? How does that work then? The, the electrical comes into the box it, and, it, and there's no main breaker to shut the entire house down? Well, typically what you have is you have what we found down here on houses. Now on condos, I don't know how that works because they're, you know, they're the all power tight. is paid right. by the, yeah. the condo association. But on houses, you'll have the main box out by the street with the, the meter. Then that goes to another box, in, in the, usually in the garage, which then goes to another box that's in the living room, kitchen, bedroom, somewhere. And so to kill all the power, you've got to go all the way to the street <laughs> to hit the, the to main the street, switch. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And, so, and the one thing that, that Josh and I have made our, our, you know, our decision to do is we buy nothing but state-of-the-art equipment. Uh -huh. Um, he, he's got a, a plugger, a plug tester that he plugs into every wall unit to see how that wall unit is done. Uh, we found that some, some plugs are, one half of the plug is, is hot, the next one's not. So that tells us there's something wrong with that wall unit. Okay, so we write it up. Um, some of them might read 123, 124, the next one reads 85, which tells you there's a loose screw somewhere or something. Yeah, something's wrong. It's defective. Now, regarding the reports, you bring you bring that up. The, I'm very impressed with the reports. Uh, here we we have everything from a email report, and it's very simple. Some go into a lot of detail. Very simple. We have uh, you produce a report very similar to what we might receive in the United States. Yes. With all the photos and an explanation of your your findings. Um, you put a lot of work, Josh puts a lot of work into putting that together. A typical report from inspections for you is 40 pages. Uh, we have had one that we did that was 129 pages. 
Uh, that wasn't one of mine, was it? No, no, it wasn't one of yours. It was, it was uh, last year when I first got started, and I remember the report real well because it was a lady that was buying a house out in Los Conchas, uh -huh. and she looked at me and she said, if you were buying the house, would you buy it? And I go, to level it oh. and build a new home. And she said, why? I said, because it's got termites really bad. And I said, you know, they're everywhere. Uh, you've got broken windows, you've got leaky windows, you need all new seals. And the lady went ahead and bought the house. She called me six months later and she says, I'd like to have you stop out and look at what we've done. And I stopped out there and her family is in construction. They came out, they took all the wood that was termite infested. They took all the windows out, they put new dual pane windows in. The house is gorgeous. and. Um, so there's a moral to that story, is you have to have vision. Exactly. And you, you, you may find a house that you're, you have your heart set on. There are issues, issues there's defects. Yep. We are, uh, you know, construction standards are different. But yep. if you're willing to make some type of sacrifice and you have the resources. Well, the nice thing that she had was it was a view straight at the ocean. She was right across the street from, from the beach. And it was a wash on the other side, so nobody was ever going to build a house there. And she said, that's the only reason I bought the house. Oh, is that right? Yep. She said that it was, she just knew that nobody had ever built in front of her, and she had views of the ocean for the rest of her life. Yeah. So, you See, know. See, I mean, and where else can you find in the United States a very similar property for the, for the price? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's why a lot, a lot of people, you know, that's why... Rocky Point has become so popular in recent years. Yeah, and it's only growing. Yeah. And I think once the uh, cruise line goes in uh, and they build some of the, some more of these condos that they're talking about building, it's only going to get bigger. How, how have you seen your business uh, here since you, you started up? Have you seen it ramp up? Well, I started it out with doing one inspection a month, which grew to two inspections a week which then grew to, well, we've done as many as, I think, seven in one week. Is that six right? Six or seven. Is that correct, Josh? Yeah, seven, seven a seven. week. Yeah. yeah. So, so that it kind of shows you actually how much activity is, is going on down here in, in Rocky Point as well. Well, that and people are understanding that, you know what, in the United States we have to get an inspection. Why shouldn't we get one here? Right. You know, it's, it's, all, it's mainly about safety. You know, you want to know when you, when you close escrow, do I have to worry about everything? Or is, can I walk in, come to the beach, and just come down to Rocky Point and enjoy? Well, I, I think that's one of the, uh, uh, Robert brings up a good point about um, our closing process down here, and that's that uh, included in our uh, offer to purchase is the uh, option for an inspection. You know, you don't have to have an inspection, but it's recommended by I think probably any agent that, that's part of AMPHI is to recommend to have an inspection done, and then that allows you to make an informed decision on Correct. how to move about closing on the house. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to act upon what the inspection says, right? but that's an option there for at, you. At least you know when you close, okay, um, I've got termites in this area, uh, water pressure is low here, I have a few out wall outlets that I have to replace, you know, which is, in most cases, other than that one lady that was extreme, we haven't found a lot wrong down here. We have found some things that, that are, like I say, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide, and I, I'm really starting, or we're really starting to push the carbon monoxide and the smoke detectors because the units are big enough that if a fire starts on one end and you're asleep at another end, you don't hear it, you could burn mm -hmm. up. Yeah, I, I, my house in Phoenix, which is up for sale right now, uh, we put uh, the carbon monoxide uh, detectors in there as well. Yeah, and, and they're wireless as well. It, well, that's the nice thing. The, the ones that we suggest people buying, um, I've been looking, trying to find a cheaper place, and so far Home Depot has the cheapest. The nice thing about them, you can, they come in pairs of two. For those are the, those kitty? Kitty. Kitty, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, the smoke detectors come in two, you know, two as a set, and you turn the switch on on both of them, push the button on one, 
and it links those two together. Now, mm -hmm. if you have just using an obscure um, uh, number. a number, let's say you have a seven bedroom house, you know, 4,000 square feet, you're out in less conscious, uh, and you sleep in one end, a fire catches in the other end or carbon monoxide in the other end from maybe the, maybe the propane tank is below that window and it comes in the house. That's going to sound off every one of the mm. units in the house to alert you so that if you are sleeping and it's carbon monoxide, which will put you even deeper to sleep and you won't wake up. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it, 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 it will it, save it, your it, life. Yeah, it, it activates all the alarms. In the it house. activates all the alarms and it's going to be quite noisy getting out of the house. I got a, I got a, I got a question for you regarding um, what you found in, in um, uh, the resort condominiums. Okay. Um, they, uh, uh, they're supposed to have smoke detectors. Right. Uh, and I don't, I'm not, you know, uh, I just want to be fair to all resorts. Right. I just want to know what, what you have found at, let's say in general, what you have found at, at the resorts. In most resorts, they do not have. So it detectors. would be recommended. I, be recommended. I've noticed in, in your inspection reports, most of them, if not all, have a recommendation for both yes. the fire alarm, and fire and smoke, and the carbon monoxide. Well, we don't do a whole lot in carbon monoxide because most of the, the condominium projects do not use gas. Okay. They don't have propane. It's strictly 100% electrical. Um, so we, we don't have to worry about the, pro, the, the carbon monoxide testing as much as we do in a single family home. Mm -hmm. Um, usually it's, uh, for, for condominium projects, it's typically the smoke detectors and the wiring, you know, um, God, I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, what, um, what, what, uh, oh, and the, and the pop-up valves, the pop -up they don't valve. want to put any pop-up valves on, on, you know, on the water heaters, which is very simple there because you can run it straight back to the wall, down the wall to the. Yeah. The washer detector. And uh, oh, and ACs. The, oh, the ACs. Yeah, yeah. the AC. The yeah, ACs yeah. are starting to get old. Yes. I mean, they've been here for what 20 years. Um, typically, you know, that outlives the the life of what the air conditioning company suggests. And also, I, I believe. <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong. Many of the air conditioners that were installed weren't really up to meeting the uh, the durability test for salt, salty air. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Well, you're, the salt air is going to get to the, typically your fins and your coils are going to be aluminum, and the salt air does get to the fins and it rots them away. Um, is that a, a real deterrent? They'll still cool, but they won't cool as, as effic uh, efficiently. So once the fins start to leave, you know, which takes the heat away from the coils themselves. Once those start being deteriorated and falling apart, your, your air conditioning is going to go. Answer something for me. I, something came up in one of our inspection reports that uh, there's condensation that's leaking from the actual vents. Is cool. that is that would, is that a correct uh, uh, understanding of what's happening there? Yes, uh, we have had a few of those, and not really sure because we haven't been able to crawl up in the vent to see exactly what it is. We just ordered a new tool that we can, it has 16 foot of cord to it that we can now try and, and uh, oh, Josh can hand to me. Uh, we can, Josh got right here. I was gonna have another camera set up so I could turn it around, but I don't. This is, this this is, is a, a camera? It's a camera that he could hook to his phone, links it. Um, oh, here's the camera part. That's the camera part. And he can link this to his phone, wow. uh, Wi-Fi style. Okay. And so we can actually take pictures uh -huh. of where the condensation is coming from. Oh. Now keep in mind, for some reason, they do not run, there you go, they do not run condensation like this. lines that'll hook on to oh, the so end of Oh, so you can stick it right through there. Yeah. 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 It's a selfie stick, too. It's a selfie stick for Let me air see more selfies, <laughs> selfies from Josh. There you go. <laughs> and so we, we just ordered that. Um, uh, we don't find many at any of the resorts, 
where they're running a condensation line from the air conditioner. And it would be rather easy for them to do if they would just um, uh, hook all the condensation lines together. They could bring it out of the units into one unit, run it over to the wall. Because yeah. in most of the condominium projects, the, the air conditioning units are in rooms. There's some of them that are on the roofs, but a lot of them are in the rooms. And so they could just run it out down the wall into the plants and use it as... Now, it's my understanding that there's usually a unit, at least where I know of, the, the actual, uh, I don't know what you call it, the heat exchangers, mm -hmm. the coils. Right. Th that is, would be a separate, with the compressors a separate, in a separate room. Correct. And then you have the... Um, uh, you have the chiller or the blower that's up in the ceiling in some right. condominium projects. Is right. that correct? Correct. correct. And, and so, um, you know, if an AC system needs to be replaced, which we're finding a lot these days, do both need to be replaced? No. In most cases, it's going to be the unit that's outside, outside because it's been affected by the weather. Okay, I see. Your air, your air exchanger that's inside the room, you know, inside the unit, it's typically just a blower motor with blower fans, and the the cool air is blown back through the coils that are done on the air conditioning. So, and we always recommend because because what what your firm does is general home inspection. Mm -hmm. We also look at the AC, and we say uh, it's recommended that we get an AC professional in here to make an assessment. Well, that's true too. And Josh, when you hand me the the temperature test. There we go. We use this machine here, this little piece of equipment, and I could do like right now the floor is 76 degrees. That light is 195 degrees. It's working good. I know that. It, it works real, <laughs> real well. So, in Sandy. You're 85 degrees. You're pretty hot, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you meant temperature-wise. <laughs> yeah. So, it, what you can do is you can test. Right, now point that on me. What am I? <laughs> I'm 60. <laughs> He's pretty cold, huh? He's 60 degrees. Oh well. <laughs> um, but but you can you can look at the return, put it into the return. Uh, the return will tell you the, the air might be com coming in, the ambient air going in is, let's just say, 76 degrees. Then you find the air duct where the air is coming back. And as long as you have a 16 degree to 23 degree temperature difference, your air conditioning is a good site, good shape. Okay, yeah. okay if it drops, like, let's say you drop, it's going in at 76 and it's only coming out 12 degrees difference, okay? Then, but it's still blowing 12 degrees difference. You're probably just looking for a free on. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's probably been a while since yeah, the unit's been simple, serviced. Just a simple, simple uh, uh, free on refill. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Josh, it's you got some more? Sometimes, right? Oh, what yeah. This is Josh here. This is show and tell. So do we have... I feel like I'm in kindergarten again. This here, we can't really... What is this? This looks like a ray gun from Star Wars. Or it something. is. That's very good. <laughs> this here, he plugs into every outlet, uh -huh. and it'll tell you how many volts is going through that outlet. It'll tell you whether it's uh, reverse polarity, whether there's a ground missing, uh, whether it's wired correctly. And he plugs it into every outlet, both outlets, because like I say, sometimes you'll get one that's reading... Um, 123 volts, and the next one's running 80 volts. So that means there's something not right in the wall outlet itself. Yeah. Okay, this, this equipment here, if he thinks there's water or, or, or moisture somewhere, he can push the trigger. He's better at this than I am. And It will read one, one color, and as you move it across, if it hits a moisture area, it changes the color. No, no I do, wait, I just push, do I, do I just push, let's, let's do it up here. Where's the light go on? Oh, I get it. Window or there's water on the back side of a drywall, that temperature difference is gonna be there. So it's, it's Josh, get in here, just show your face. Say, do a photo bomb. There's Josh, 
<laughs> uh, so if you get like sewage, you know, water on the backside of a, a drywall, then that's going to be probably colder, cooler, two or three degrees. So if you're going across the wall, so you're so you're spot. so you're you're checking for electric, you're checking for the uh, AC, Leaks, you're AC, uh, plumbing, s plumbing, smoke. Um, water condensation or some type of uh, uh, water seepage into yep. the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also check the tiles. You can walk along with a golf ball, and you can drop the golf ball. See, that's nice, solid. God, whoever laid your tile did a very good. Oh, oh, there it There's is. There's a hollow one. So you can hear the difference, and he does that in all of them. And so he spends, like on a condo, two and a half, three hours. Two and a half and three hours. Uh-huh. Um, a home's a little more because we do have to go up and check the roofs. Uh-huh. Uh, Tell me something about the roofs. Now, um, most of, a lot of the roofs here are flat, flat roofs, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Most of them are flat roofs, correct. And In most cases, they're concrete. They are. But, as we all know, concrete cracks. So what they have done is they've taken the concrete, they've rolled it with rolled roofing, and then they use what they call elastomeric, which is a roof elastomeric. coating. Elastomeric. Elastomeric. And there's several different companies that make it. Um, there's, there's one that's very, very thick when you pour it out. You can almost pour five gallons in one spot and it'll just pile up. It's that thick. Use a roller, roll it all out. And if, uh, if you'll take and, you, and do that about every five years, you'll have a watertight roof. Okay, all right. So, so that's what's wrong with our roof. It doesn't have that. We, we had some leaks in here. Oh, have you? Yeah, okay. yeah we've had some leaks Then in I here. would say do the elastomeric yeah. part, and uh, that should take care of it. If you have any big cracks, they, they have what the, what's called elastomeric 951, which is a patch, and it'll take big cracks and fill those in nice, and then roll over the elastomeric um, and, and most of our contractors down here, roofing contractors, would would generally know how to Correct. what what that material yeah. is and, and how to get it done. And if you're selling to a homeowner that knows how to do things themselves, it's not that difficult. All you do is power wash your roof off or wash it off with a hose and a and a uh, sprayer. Get as much dirt off as you can. Pour your elastic mark out. Use a roller, roll it, you're done. Sounds very similar to doing your garage with the... Exactly. Uh, okay. The garage floor. Yep. Pretty much the same thing. Um, do you have any questions, Sandy? No. No? Okay. We've been... We, the and, and now, so, um, uh, uh, what's usually the turnaround time for a report? If, uh, and, and the other question, I think, is being that you're so busy. See, we're kind of on a, on a time frame here. We right. got... We get 10 business day inspection period now. It used to be 15. You call us in 90% of the time, you will have your report within four days um, because, you know, we you are You can busy. get out there. Oh, yeah. If I have to, I gotta come, I'll come to Mexico and do it myself. You can do it, yeah. Yeah, and help Josh out. But typically, if we get called, we can get the report, the, the inspection done one day. And if he can get the inspection to me that same day, then I can get it done and out to the client. I send the client a copy, I send their broker a copy. Just in case their, their client happens to call and say, hey, did you see this, did you notice that? And the most important thing about having an inspection done is most people are so excited about buying a, a condo or a house down here that they miss everything. It's more of an emotional thing. They, right, they, they walk so in and go, oh, I like this, I like that, I, I, I love everything. And they don't see all the bad things. Yeah. They don't, you know. And, I, and that brings up a good point. I mean, one of, one of the jobs that, that Sandy and I have is to make sure that you have an informed decision on how to move forward with, with the purchase. And, and down here, what, what we have is we have a 10-day inspection period, business day inspection period. And during that time, we get an estimate of your closing costs. Um, we check for a certificate of no liens. We bring uh, the inspector out to give us the report. And then now you have all of these uh, factors that, that are gonna help you make your decision on whether to move, move forward with the house, uh, with the purchase. Another thing that, that can often happen is that you have two choices. 
One, uh, three choices actually. One is that you can uh, request for the repairs to be made uh, to the seller. Um, two, uh, you can request a uh, credit for Correct. the possible expenses that would be involved on, on uh, making those repairs. So you get a credit on your settlement statement. Or you, uh, you could potentially cancel the contract within that 10-day that inspection period. Once we receive the report, uh, we have five days to respond to the seller regarding that report. Now, one thing that on the listing side is a lot of times what we do advise our, our listing clients is to get a home inspection prior to listing the house or the condominium. That way you know what, what potential defects are there and potentially ward off any um, uh, problems in, in, uh, or delays in, in your closing because of some issue that may have popped yeah. up. Well, I believe from your past experiences with us, I think we're out there usually within a day or two. Yeah, absolutely. We, we try and take care of as many people as we can. and Very responsive. You guys have always uh, called us and we try and get out there and, and get her done as quick as we can, get the report back in your hand. Uh, I, I have had some of your clients call, some other clients call from other brokers that, you know, they want to ask questions and they want to ask if that's okay if I talk to you. I go, yes, I, yeah, absolutely. I did the inspection for you. So if yeah. you have questions, you paid for it. Yeah. yeah the so client please. Paid for it. Yeah. And, and yeah. that, you know, there, there is, it is the buyer's responsibility for the cost of, of the inspection. And for that, uh, you, you get the services that, that you paid for, and that's a, a, a terrific inspection report, an honest inspection report, and the ability to ask the inspector uh, you know, w what their findings were. And maybe, maybe if you need some clarification, yeah. they can get the clarification from you. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a problem in, in answering questions for them uh, because this may be one of the biggest decisions of their life. Absolutely, know? absolutely it is. It's a big decision when you're, when you're spending three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand five hundred thousand dollars on a property. And, and like I say, they walk in, and in most cases, they're sitting there looking at the view going, I don't care about the condo, I don't care about the house, look at the view. And they miss all the things that are wrong, that's what we're there for. Well, I, you know, Just on the flip make sure side, I, Make sure they find what they, you know, what they're missing. On the flip side, my wife and I just bought a house in San Clemente. You know, we okay. were we were beachside residents for quite a while, and we decided to move in town. And uh, we had, uh, 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 well, Josh came out, um, did our inspection, came back with the report. I looked over it, and there were some issues that were of concern. But you know what? I like the house so much. I'm like, you know, forget it. I, I just want the house. Give me the house. <laughs> And, um, I think I remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> right. And it was, um, you know, we're perfectly happy with it. That was our decision. And uh, I think, um, uh, like I said, you have the materials available to make the decision whether or not you want yeah. to proceed. So yeah. is there anything else that you'd like to, to tell us about inspections for you? And Well, um, we're here to stay. We're not going anywhere. We're growing. Um, uh, I, I'm hoping by the end of this year that we hire another person or two. Good. To uh, because it is it is getting busy, and I think once the um, uh, the port goes in, they finally get that going. They have their first cruise line, and everybody feels comfortable that the cruise line's here to stay. Uh, they're they're building the new condos uh, that was it Las Palomas. Las Palomas Phase hey, Three. Phase we, three. Have Playa, uh, we have a. Uh, uh, Encanto yeah, Made Towers, towers. Mm -hmm. Playa and Encanto, and then uh, Playa Azul. And we have, yeah, we have quite a few so there's projects. quite a few projects that are coming online now, plus all the recent. Isla Del Mar. Isla Del Mar. Del Mar. We've got Eagle Village coming online. Costa Divina. Costa Divina. And that's uh, uh, Ocean Front and Jack Nicholas Golf. Uh, mm -hmm. Golf Course. That's on the other side of Choya Bay. Yes, on, on the other okay. side of Choya Bay. So. Okay. Lots going on. There's a lot of work for everybody. Um, uh, lots to choose from, and, and again, we want to have an informed decision. Um, just a, real quickly, clients are always asking me about uh, forms of payment 
And usually, you know, in the past, we've done just strictly cash. We what, take what, checks, cash. You can use uh, Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E. Which I've been uh, using a lot of now. And uh, we actually take credit cards now. You took, you, you finally we got started, on the bandwagon yep. with the yep. with credit cards. So, so we do, you. we do take credit cards. Um, now we want to, we want to give you a complete uh, report. So. Uh, uh, we're going to ask for your contact information, snail mail address, email address. Um, it's, it's almost to a point now where it's a know your customer Correct. Uh, issue. And so we'll Correct. be asking for a lot of that information. Yep. Yeah, typically what we need is their, the, the buyer's name, the buyer's U.S. address, their phone number, their email, and then uh, an MLS report so that we can check, we verify a lot of the, the you know, information. information. We have had some brokers, and it's not you guys at all, but there are some other brokers in the market that don't put down a whole lot of things. They'll put down into two bedroom, one bath. Mm. You don't know if it's got a garage, you don't know if it's on propane or electricity or whatever. So then what I do is I take that and I go back into um, the internet and I try and look up past Oh, uh, yeah, MLS sheets so that I can help. Do you, have, do you have access to MLS? I don't. You don't? Oh, no. Did you know you, you, you can as an, a member of AMPI? Um, no, I didn't. Yeah, you need to get signed up with AMPI because as a vendor, uh, you could join, join AMPI. Okay. Yeah, as we have a lot of service providers that are members of AMP. Oh, that'd be Ampe. great. Yeah, that'd be uh -huh. great because that would help me out. Yeah, tremendously we, setting up the reports. Just so everybody knows, AMP <laughs> is the uh, the uh, Mexican Association, uh, the Mexican Association of uh, Real Estate Professionals. Sandy, how do you say that in uh, Spanish? There you go. I don't know my Spanish. Thank yet. you very yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, uh, and when Sandy and I have an accepted offer, we provide uh, quite a few details on what the, what the, uh, uh, what the transaction is yep. all about. And we send that out to all of the interested parties so they have it. So um, That always helps us. It does. It, it really does. And, and with this market, you, you have to be clear and concise and, and give out as much information as possible. Yep. So... Well, Robert, we want to thank you for coming and, and well, visiting thank you very with much. us. And, uh, thank you. And uh, our, oh. certainly, I, I hope our, our viewers and our clients um, have uh, uh, learned something from this. Uh, feel free to give us a call. We're going to have uh, Robert's information uh, online here with a link to. Uh, do you have, a, you, have, you have a website yet? You have your website? No website. We're working on that right now. Okay. Once it comes online, we'll get it, but uh, we'll ha certainly have their contact information. It, it, it just. This thing took off faster than we thought, and yeah, then um, it did. I came down with cancer last year, so Josh jumped in and took over, and and uh, now that I beat cancer, we're both Good working. Good for you. It. So well, congratulations to you. you. That's a big job, huh? That was. Yeah, and it's nice it to see you here as well. That was the scariest thing I did in my life. Yeah. So. And now, now, now you would get to enjoy uh, life down here. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. what it's all about. Bringing, yep. bringing the family together. That's our motto. That's it. That's it. Thank you all for Thank joining you. us, and uh, uh, feel free to give us a call anytime. Uh, RockyPointKyle.com, RockyPointSandy.com, and uh, you can find us online at uh, United Country Mexico Advisors. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a great day.